Today we are going to talk about the inverse of a function. As you know that any function takes an input like x, does some operation, addition, subtraction, division, whatever, <coughs> and it creates an output with you, which you usually call y. The inverse of a function it's exactly the opposite operation meaning I will give you the output and I expect you to get me the original value meaning X so instead of going from X to F of X which is equal to Y this time you take Y and you return X to do this one we are going to find the inverse of any function. Now the mathematical notation that we use to, in, to show the inverse of a function is the name of the function with the superscript negative 1. So if the function is f, f minus 1 is called the inverse of the function. Now if we go back to the definition that the inverse, as we stated below uh, above, takes the output and returns the input, we can put it in a mathematical expression like the following. This, in this case, I know that f of a gives me the output b. f of minus 1, if it gets the output, B as its input, it will return the original input, which is A. To give you a visual display of what exactly is the inverse function, we have two graphs here. One on the x-axis is the speed of a car, and on the y, which is dependent variable, is the stopping distance. As you can see from the graph, as the speed of the car is increasing, the stopping distance of the car also increases. The inverse function does the opposite action. In this case, in the inverse, if I give you the stopping distance, I will expect you to give me the speed of the car. If you notice, the x and y coordinates are flipped. Here, speed is on the x-axis. In the inverse, speed goes on the y-axis. Here, the stopping distance is on the y, and in the inverse, it becomes the x, which is the main idea about the inverse function. The only thing you have to do is to just flip x and y to get the inverse function. One thing you have to be careful is the notation used. In our definition, the inverse of a function is shown with a negative 1 as an exponent. This doesn't mean that f of negative 1x is equal to 1 over f of x. So this, be careful, do not use it. f of minus 1x is not treated as the exponent, negative 1. So f of minus 1x is not equal to 1 over f of x. In our first example, we have a table of values which shows the function f of x. We are supposed to plot f of x and then find f of minus 1x, the inverse of f of x, then graph f of x, and also the inverse function. And also we have to determine the domain and range of f of x and its inverse. Now, to plot f of x is very simple. We're just going to go through the table of values and plot the points. The first point is negative 5 and 0, so negative 5 and 0 is going to be a point 
which is here. The next one is negative 4 and 2, which is going to be here. Next one, negative 3 and 5. Negative 3 and 5 is going to be around here. Then it's going to be negative 2 and 6, which is going to be here. And then 0 and 7, which is going to be here. So this is our function f of x. To find f of minus x, as we said before, you just interchange the values of x and y. So f of minus 1 of x, we can write as 0 and negative 5, 2 and negative 4, 5 and negative 3, 6 and negative 2, and then 7 and 0. We just flipped the order. So now we are going to plot 0 and negative 5. So it's going to be here. 2 and negative 4, which is going to be here. 5 and negative 3. 5 and negative 3 is going to be here. 6 and negative 2 is going to be here. And 7 and 0 is going to be here. Now, this is your inverse function. In general, if you want to find the inverse of any function, what you are going to do is you are going to find the reflection of your graph onto the line y equal x. So let's plot the line y equal x and then compare the points and see if they are really a reflection about the line y equal x. I plotted the line y equal x, which is this line. And as you can see, this point and this point, they are reflection of each other about the line y equal x. This point and this point are also reflection. This point and this point are reflection. This point and this one is reflection. And also these two points are reflection. In general, so remember, if you want to find the inverse of any graph reflected about line y equal x, and you get the graph of the inverse function. Now the question is that what is the domain and range of f of x and its inverse? It is very simple to see that the domain of f of x are just the x values of f of x which is negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and 0. The range of f of, f of x is 0, 2, 5, 6, and 7. For f of minus 1, the range and domain of the f of x are inversed. So this means that the domain of f of x becomes the range of f of minus 1 and the range of f of x becomes the domain, which is obvious from f minus 1. If you look at f minus 1, the x values are the range values for f of x and the range of f of minus 1 is the domain of f of x. In the previous example, we found f of minus 1x if the table of value is given. What about if the equation of function f of x is given? How do you find the inverse? The process is very simple. What you have to do is to follow the steps which I'm going to explain here. First, Instead of writing f of x or g of x or h of x, these just write it as y equal a function of x. Then try to solve for x. This means isolate x. Have x on the left, on one side of the equal sign, everything else on the other side. 
at the end replace y with x and x with f minus 1x and that's going to give you the inverse function now we are going to do one example so you can see how this is done the first example we are going to do is to find the inverse of the function f of x is 2x minus 3 the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write this one as y equal 2x minus 3. I have to isolate this one. So I'm going to bring negative 3 to the left. So 2x becomes equal to y plus 3. So x is y plus 3 over 2. The last step I'm going to do is I'm going to change x with f minus 1 so I'm going to write f minus 1 is equal to and y with x that's it this gives me the inverse function here now to graph this one this is going to be a line 2 and as usual to plot this one we are going to draw our x and y coordinate so we are going to say when x let's say is 1 I'm going to plot the inverse first if x is 1 then f minus 1 is 1 plus 3 is 4 divided by 2 is 2 so if x is 1 f minus 1 is 2 so this is the point I will pick another point let's say if we say if x is 5 2 3 4 5 then 5 plus 3 is 8 divided by 2 is 4 3 4 so it's going to be a point something like this one then I'm going to just connect these two points together this is going to give me f minus 1 now to plot the original function I'm going to do the same thing when x is 0 f of x is 2 times 0 minus 3 which is going to give me minus 3 so 1 2 3 which is here if x is let's say 1 y is negative 1 which is going to be here if x is 1 y is negative 3 negative 1 and now if I connect these two together I get my original function which is f now it says determine whether the inverse of f of x is a function as you can see f minus 1 passes the vertical line test meaning that if I draw vertical lines these lines they cross the graph only in one point so this is a function the next example we are supposed to find the inverse of a quadratic function uh, there are a couple of ways you can do this one either you, you can use the quadratic form uh, <coughs> or you can find the vertex form of quadratic of the quadratic function I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, completing square to find the vertex form so I'm going to write this one as y is equal to factor 2 from the first two terms so I get x squared plus 8x plus 29 which is equal to now I'm going to divide 8 by 2 which is 4 square root and add and subtract so I'm going to say x squared plus 8x plus 16 minus 16 remember 8 divided by 2 is 4 and then square root is 16 add and subtract and then plus 29 now I take these three terms and package them together so I'm going to write this guy as 2 times x squared plus 8x plus 16 close bracket 
Now I'm going to multiply 2 by negative 16, which is negative 32, and then plus 29. This is going to give me, now, x squared plus 8x plus 16 can be written as x plus 4 squared. And negative 32 plus 29 gives me negative 3. This is my vertex form, which is now equal to y. So now I can solve for x. I can move negative 3 to the right. So I get 2 times x plus 4 squared is equal to y plus 3 or divide by 2 I'm going to get x plus 4 squared is equal to y plus 3 divided by 2 take the square root of both sides and remember the square root of any number is plus or minus that number so I get plus or minus square root of y plus 3 over 2. So from here I get x is negative 4 plus or minus square root of y plus 3 over 2. Now to find the inverse I replace x with f minus 1 and I replace y with x. So this is my inverse function here. Now, uh, the first question that uh, we may answer is that, is this a function? It is obvious that this is not a function because for every unique value for x, I'm going to get two results for f minus 1 or y. And this means that this can't be a function because the definition of a function is that for every x we have to get one unique y. And here for every x we get two y values. So this is not a function. The last part of the question is plotting f of x and f minus 1x. So roughly the way I'm going to plot it is I'm going to draw my x and y coordinate system. For the first f of x I know that the vertex is at negative 4 and negative 3 as it is obvious here the vertex is at negative 4 and negative 3 so x is negative 4 1 2 3 4 y is negative 3 which is here now if you go ahead and find the x intercepts or the zeros <coughs> we have three points and we can plot it or another way of doing it is we just assign it two values to x and the value at f of x and then plot the function. For instance, for the first one, if we assign x to be uh, x to be let's say one point to the right of vertex, which is here, which is negative three, then if you evaluate the function, the function becomes negative one. If you evaluate the function at x is equal to negative 5, which is this point, it's going to be negative 1 again for y. And then you can plot the graph roughly, which looks like this. Now to plot the inverse, which is this function, I'm going to use the fact that the inverse, every point from function is going to be uh, reversed, x and y. So if the vertex was at the point negative 4 and negative 3, 
on the inverse the vertex is at negative 3 and negative 4 so the inverse is at negative 3 and negative 4 if this is negative 4 y negative 3 is here so I'm going to get a point here another point that we used on the function was this point which was in <coughs> negative 3 and negative 1 so on the inverse it's going to be negative 1 and negative 3 so negative 1 and negative 3 is going to be this point another point on the function was this one which was negative 5 and negative 1 so on the inverse it becomes negative 1 and negative 5 so negative 1 and negative 5 becomes this so we connect them together and we get a graph like this one and it's obvious from the graph that f minus 1 is not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test our last example is the two graphs that we had at the beginning what we have right now is the graph of the relationship between the speed and the stopping distance we know that the function representing the stopping distance as a function as of velocity or speed is given by this formula we also know that the distance has to be either zero or greater than zero and the speed also has to be zero or greater than zero so automatically we can state the domain and range of function d which which will be the domain domain is equal to every velocity which is in real numbers and it has to be greater than or equal to zero and the range is going to be d which is in real numbers and again d has to be greater than or equal to zero so this is the domain and range of the original function now we have to check the domain and range of the inverse function the domain and range of inverse function as we can see from the graph is the domain for the inverse function and this is the inverse function remember and the domain is these values is all the d's which are again in real numbers and d has to be greater than or equal to zero which again as you can see the domain of the inverse function is the range of the original function and the range of the inverse function which is this one is the speed which can be either zero or a positive number so v has to be in real numbers and v has to be greater than or equal to zero which again is the domain of the original function the second part of the question asks to find the equation for the inverse function to find the equation of the inverse function again we write the, the main equation which is d is equal to 0 0.006 v squared then we are going to divide both sides by 0 0.006 to get rid of the 0 0.006 so we get v squared is d divided by 0 0.006 we take the square root of both sides we get d is square root of d 
divided by 0 0.006 now you may wonder why we didn't say plus or minus because we already know that the velocity or the speed cannot be a negative number so we can only accept the positive root of square root so to write the inverse function we are going to replace v with d minus 1 and we replace d with v so this is going to be our inverse function and the domain and range we explained it before but even here we can see that because v is under the square root v has to be greater than or equal to zero and we already know how the square root function looks like when you graph it if you remember it looks something like this one d minus one or the inverse has to be greater than or equal to zero two as we stated before 